the Niebosch HSE Introduction to Incident Investigation Award. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Where does this qualification fit in with the other Niebosch quals? Uh, who should do it? What's in it? Why should you do it? Is it for everybody? And more importantly, where should you do it? Like who's delivering it? How do you get it? And so on. Well, it's a level two qualification, which officially it means that it's below the Nibosh general certificates. The, the, the certificate is a certificate. It's level three. This is an award. So it's a level below. That being said, it's a lot more specialized than the general certificates. I mean, the key word there being general. This qualification specializes in incident investigation. And whilst it's an entry level qualification, only an award, it actually has a lot more detail about incident investigation than its higher level qual, the general certificates. Uh, it has a ton of information which just isn't covered in a certificate whatsoever. So it's kind of a specialist qualification. Nibosh say it's entry level, they say it's targeted at frontline people who are involved in incident investigations, maybe middle managers. Um, it's, you know, it's for managers, supervisors, team leaders, maybe safety reps, and they specifically say that it's not really for established, experienced health and safety professionals. And, uh, and that being said, I I kind of disagree to some extent. I think it might benefit some established health and safety professionals. In theory, it really shouldn't. In theory, someone who's got a diploma, who's chartered and so on, shouldn't really need this qualification. And there will be a lot of information in it, which they already know. But, and there's a big but here, um, a lot of health and safety professionals don't really have a lot of experience in incident investigation. And in fact, even if they do have a lot of experience, they may have a lot of bad habits. You know, I've known a few people, I won't name any names, but I remember one character who used to be quite the bully in incident investigations. He used to accuse people of being liars. He used to say things like, uh, if, I, if I catch you lying, I will assume everything you say is a lie. And, uh, and once, I remember he, he was telling me that he sent somebody out of the room and said, you better have a long, hard think about what you're going to say next. And he sent them out of the room packing. Um, yeah, I mean, th th these, these types of behaviors might be useful in some in a minority of situations, but generally speaking, they're counterproductive in incident investigation. And this is the sort of stuff that incident uh, this course gets into. Um, it starts off with some basics, um, like the you know, the reasons why we investigate. You know, what are the legal, moral, financial consequences of incidents, and we're trying to prevent those. Why do we investigate near misses and so on? That's basic stuff. You'll cover that on an IOSH managing safely course usually, but it's a really good refresher for the team leaders and supervisors and so on who who are maybe doing this training. You know, you, it repeats what they might already know, and it sinks in a bit more. It goes into the human factors. So so, yeah, the organizational factors, job factors, uh, individual factors, which contribute to incidents. And, and there, even the health and safety pros sometimes don't really get this. You know, it's kind of an abstract topic on the, uh, on the health and safety quals. And uh, it's a good refresher even for the health and safety people. And it's, a, it's, it's very good information for the frontline supervisors to kind of have an awareness that it's not just about individual fault. It's about, you know, what about the job, the equipment, the workplace, the organization, the leadership, the culture, and so on. It goes into a lot of detail on um, mistakes, slips, lapses, violations, all this human error stuff. And actually that's that's not on the NIBOS general certificate, um, at least not anymore. That's, that's kind of diploma level knowledge. So whilst, again, it's a level two entry level qualification, there's some quite technical information in there. Then it moves on into the steps to an incident investigation. Uh, so based on HSG 245, the four steps to incident investigation, which is gather information, analyze information, identify risk control measures. Um, and uh, oh, God, the other one slipped my mind. But um, it also covers what does a good incident investigation look like? What are the barriers to a good incident investigation? And uh, and again, this is information which isn't really not presented in any great depth on a NIBOSH general certificate. Um, it, it goes into the five whys analysis quite well. And, and again, there, the IOSH Managing Safely course actually does have a bit of information on five whys. There's a whole exercise on five whys. But in the NIBOSH general certificate, you know, it, it, there's no there's not really any room for any practical exercises around a five whys. I mean, chances are you're just not going to get to do a five whys analysis in a NIBOSH general certificate. There really isn't time. So again, this course kind of exceeds that standard. 
he goes into a lot of detail on how to handle witnesses, how to interview people, what are the good practices, the bad practices, and in particular, it focuses on the peace model, uh, which is uh, yeah, which is planning, uh, engage, explain, accounts, clarification, challenge, and uh, and closure, uh, and evaluation at the end. So there's this whole model that is followed again that doesn't get a mention on the NEBOSH general certificates, uh, and really useful for managers and safety practitioners. Uh, to, to get their teeth in, into this. And then finally, the course closes with advanced methodologies like uh, like fishbone analysis and so on. So that's the general contents of the course, and it's, it's really quite advanced. Now, um, where can you do it? Well, there are lots of good training providers um, and lots of mediocre ones as well, but plenty of people out there uh, are accredited to deliver this course around the UK and also abroad. Um, one downside to it is, though, is that there isn't yet a huge amount of demand for this course. It's, not, it's certainly nowhere near as popular as the general certificates. So what does that mean? It means that these courses tend to be advertised and then postponed or cancelled because there just aren't enough people on the course. So if you booked, if you booked onto this course, there's a fairly good chance, depending on where you are in the country, um, there's a good chance it's going to get postponed because there just won't be enough people to justify running it. And, and it can get postponed repeatedly. I've heard stories of people waiting a year, over a year, in order to sit this course, which can be incredibly frustrating. I would also say choose your training provider very, very carefully. Um, you know, and I'd love to say, you know, choose me, but actually as accredited as, as I am, um, I don't deliver this course as an open course. You know, you can't book yourself as a single person onto this course. I deliver it in-house for employers to put their team through. Uh, so it's in-house training only and video e-learning with me. Um, but as an open course for a, a delegate, choose carefully because yeah, this course can be deaf by PowerPoint, as all health and safety, or all courses can be deaf by PowerPoint. And if you only want the certificate, if you only want a piece of paper, the tick in the box for your CV, that's fine. Just go for the cheapest one, the one who's running it, and, and get the qual. Uh, but if you want an engaging experience, if you want something that gives you more than just a piece of paper, if you want you know, knowledge, skills, real insight, choose carefully and ask them about how they're going to present the, um, uh, present the course. The way we deliver the course is, well, the way I deliver it is, uh, you know, we, we try and make it as interactive as we can. And what that means is we actually investigate an incident on the course. It's like, there is PowerPoint, but we're bouncing back and forth between the theory and the practice. You know, so if we're going to talk about gathering information, then we're going to actually get to gather information. We're going to find information. If we're going to analyze information, that's theoretical. Yeah, well, we're going to go through risk assessments, go through method statements. We're going to go through witness statements and so on, analyzing that. And then we'll do an actual 5Y analysis on that incident. And then when it comes to um, the uh, interviews, it's like, well, we don't just talk about the interviews. We actually do some interviews, actually interview some people on the course and it's great sometimes it goes so well and sometimes it goes so badly it's hilarious but it really does teach people these these key skills so it has to be something interactive now if you're struggling to get onto a face-to-face -face course then e-learning is the other option and unfortunately there are only uh, three companies who are accredited at the moment to deliver this course by e-learning and actually one of them doesn't even have the course up and running yet so there are two two options now one of those options uh, is Compassa and that's me that's my course um, and there is another course available out there um, both courses hugely different one of them is um, not mine <laughs> the other one the other one is basically the Nibosh book uh, which has been licensed and basically copied and pasted into an e-learning platform. So it's lots of text with uh, a handful of quizzes and a handful of uh, introductory videos, kind of black and white, just someone talking. Um, our course, um, and this is where I'm going to blow my own trumpet, the entire thing is delivered by video. Um, it's not just me talking, but you know, there's lots of footage, lots of images, and the videos are interactive. So you have to participate in the video. You have to do things in the video to get the video to move forward. And it's also got um, you know, all the written materials, downloadable book, the hundreds of exercises, literally, I think it was like 400 and odd interactive exercises in there. So um, both roughly the same price, there's a little bit of a price difference between them, but nothing to shout home about. And so if you are just by yourself and you want this course and you're struggling to get a, 
a, a, a decent face-to-face -face course where you are, then, then consider e-learning and have a look at both options. You can try both options as well. Have a look at, the, at my competitors, by all means. You can do a free trial. Come and have a free trial with us and, and take a look and see which one you prefer. So there we are. If anyone's got any questions about the course, if you'd like to take a look, like a demo, just feel free to send me a, a direct message. Uh, you got any comments? Uh, leave them below. Give me a like. Feel free to connect. Feel free to subscribe, etc., etc. I'll catch you later.